Well, welcome back to Comstock's channel, accelerating the commercialization of decarbonization and joining us to talk about the recent accusations of uh, generative materials, quantum, uh, quantum generative materials, of course, Corrado, the CEO. Welcome back, sir. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for having me here. Pleasure to be here. I love having you on. Now, this is a uh, fair, fair mouthful because there's a lot kind of entangled <laughs> in that headline. Maybe break it down for us because there's a lot of AI involved here as well. Absolutely. Like about four years ago, actually, almost like four and a half years ago, our chief technology officer came to us and said that there was an opportunity to invest in generative AI. And quite frankly, I didn't even know what the word generative AI meant at the time. And, and people have to appreciate this was before open AI and chat GPT was even mainstream. Like it, it wasn't being spoken about. And, and even when that went mainstream, you're talking about large language models, okay? We're not talking about language models, we're talking about physics-based models. So quantum physics, quantum chemistry, quantum geophysics. And what does that mean? It means you're literally developing, teaching the machine to simulate materials at the atomic level. And, and when we say simulate materials, we mean characteristics of materials, like, like what, what's the heat density? What's the thermal conductivity? What's the electrical conductivity? This is what R&D centers for material, material science companies around the world deal with every day, not at the atomic level, right? At the physical level, like through trial and error. So, you know, most people are shocked to learn that, that lithium ion battery was introduced um, from Japan in 1992. So we're talking about 30, you know, 30 years plus of it being the standard for, you know, for, for power storage and power gen, you know, power storage and electrification. And why hasn't it advanced faster? Because you, you know, it takes a lot of, of, of trial, a lot of error, a lot of science, a lot of development to get something that that's even better conductor or a better storer or otherwise. And so what GenMap has been developing is the ability to simulate those characteristics at the atomic level to the point where you could run thousands, if not millions of simulations, for example, on a battery chemistry or on a material, specific materials characteristic, and then synthesize those scenarios in the laboratory for breakthrough. And so it, it, it was um, really cool. Frankly, the thesis was this. It was bleeding edge. It was pioneering without a doubt. But our estimation was five to seven years down the road, you're, you're a dinosaur if you're not using these technologies and these techniques in your material science development. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the insight here. And do you want to talk a little bit too how this plays into Comstock and uh, how you guys kind of seeing this being uh, synergistic? Absolutely. Originally, originally the idea was as GenMats, you know, physicists, chemists, machine learners, engineers develop these technologies, um, Comstock would then be able to leverage those technologies knowledgeably um, early, right? We would be an early adopter of advancing our material science for carbon fuels, right? Our material science for uh, electrification minerals and chemistries. And so now, instead of being sort of a minority owner, uh, sort of observing that technology develop as our businesses were develop, developing, we now have integrated it where we get 100% control of that material science team. In effect, it would become integral and strategic to Comstock's, all of Comstock's innovation activities. Although, and, and we would, we would, prioritize now maybe more the development of some of the materials that are most directly impacting us. So, so we're very excited about that. We still see it as a, as a business. We still see it as being able to serve the broader uh, material science and material science development uh, community, you know, as, as a technology. So in, in a sense, the best of both worlds, we'll, we'll have 100% of the material science development, the technology that that drives it, you know, the people and the IP. 
you know, I definitely appreciate the clarity here as we pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section and subscribe for News Catalyst when it comes down the wire. Of course, we'll bring it to you here. But on the note, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.